Okay, so what type of home is this? So what invention helped the steel plow to carve out those little um, sod bricks? Um, so again, the Homestead Act really is what's going to encourage the development of the West. We're going to see that the federal government, this is the first time that they're ever giving something to a mass quantity of people. They're going to give 160 acres to anybody who agrees to move West and develop that land for five years. So a lot of people will move out there and they realize, uh, what did the Great Plains lack? Trees. And so this is why they have to use that steel plow to make the sod homes because the geography of the West lacked the trees to build. So the sod, what we know is it's thickly wooded prairie ground that is made into these little bricks using the steel plow. And the sod homes are really cool because in the winter they stay warm and in the summer they stay really cool. We're going to see many sod busters are, um, will adjust to the lack of wood and trees in there because they're going to make those fences made out of barbed wire because who don't they want plodding through their land? <laughs> the cowboys with their cattle drives. And a lot of stuff that they have, like in this image, the girls with their dresses, the window panes, the carriage, they're gonna buy through what catalog? What was the name of that catalog company? Sears, Sears and the Montgomery Wards. So most farmers face economic problems in the West because they're gonna settle on cash crops such as wheat and corn. And when everybody settles on those cash crops, what happens to the price of corn or wheat? It goes down, and so they always face low prices for their prom pop goods and a deflated currency because what have we been basing our currency on? Gold or silver at this time? Gold. And so what does that do to the money supply? It shrinks it so there's less paper money, and that's why we have a deflated currency. We're also gonna see farmers are gonna be driven further into debt because a lot of the things that they have to buy for their farm, they're gonna have to buy farm machinery that puts interest of 50 to 60% on them. And a lot of them will produce their goods at a lower price and they're, they're gonna be in this perpetual cycle of debt. So we talked about organizations that were formed to help farmers. And one of the first one, which was a farmers only group, was the Grange. It was supposed to be an educational, social, and fraternal organization where they would all come and they would educate each other on better farm practices. They would talk about their problems. And one of their biggest problems was the railroad. It was those trusts that charged them too much. And this is what's gonna lead to many of these people that are involved in the Grange to be elected into office and we will see they will circumvent their trust by creating their own type of trust, elevator trust. Do y'all know what a grain elevator is? It's where they go put all their excess grain so it stays dry. Okay? And we're going to see the Grange will elect members into the state legislature. People then will create Granger laws that are going to regulate the railroad. And we saw this, that the Supreme Court's going to come in saying that the state cannot do that. And by the Wabash case, we're going to see the Supreme Court will overturn that, saying that the state cannot regulate. Other groups who are going to align with the Grange are the Greenback Labor Movement. Y'all said that they wanted to help labor, but they also wanted inflation. We're going to see the Grange will also unite with the Farmers Alliance. And we're going to see the Farmers Alliance, again, they have the same issues as the Grange. They wanted to regulate the railroads. They felt that the manufacturers were being protected by our government. And so the alliance will form. We're going to see there's a colored alliance because they are segregated. So the Grange, the Farmers Alliance, and the workers, industrial workers, such as the Greenback Labor Movement, are all going to come together in a new party, which we're going to see it as the Populist Party. They're going to demand a greater role of our government to help the people because who has our government been helping? The business. And so we've seen this image before, right? That the farmer really dislikes the railroad because they're getting charged higher rates. So on question 34 of your study guide, it asks you to list all the populist platform beliefs. I'm going to tell you on your note set that you picked up on Roman numeral number three, they're all right here. Okay? So if on 34 of your study guide on chapter 23, you will see it on Roman numeral number three. I'm about to go over all of their party platform stuff. So they believe in bimetallism. So what two metals do they want in our money supply? Okay, but what would that do to the money supply? Would that increase it or decrease it? Increase it, so that means we could produce more what? Paper money. That would cause deflation or inflation? Inflation. Do the common men want inflation? Yes. And you have to understand why. You're like, wait, y'all know temporarily that if inflation occurs, that means prices go up. And you're just like, oh my gosh, I don't like that. 
But there's this thing you're going to learn in economics next year called the wage price spiral. As prices go up, what should happen with wages? They go up. And so in the long run, does your debt increase? No. So if your wages go up, because prices go up, do you now have more money to pay off your debt? Mm -hmm. And that's what farmers want inflation, right? You have to understand my first year teaching, my pay was 32,000. The starting off teacher pay today is 50,000. Has there been inflation? Yes. yes, over the past 17 years there has. And so now, Miss Verdeen, right? I, my pay has gone up because of inflation. Has prices gone up? But has my mortgage or my car and my car payment gone up? No, so I have more money to pay off that stuff. And so debtors really like inflation. What about those businessmen that I'm now paying back in my inflated dollars? Do they like that? Mm -hmm. No, because the, their dollar that they're getting is actually probably worth less, right? So do y'all get bimetallism? The next one is the graduated income tax. At this time period, everybody was paying the same tax. A farmer was paying the same tax as a rich man. Do you think people like that? So let me explain what the graduated income tax is. Uh, 2020. Okay. Oh, I'm going to show you what graduate income tax means. Ah, I keep on pulling up the wrong one. not the image I wanted, but we're going to use this. Okay. Do y'all see this right here? So most of you are, we'll just look at individual. Most of y'all work, right? So if you make anywhere from zero to $9,875, you're paying 10% of your income in taxes. Okay. So then let's just say you go a little bit over that. Anywhere from 9000 to 40000 you're paying 12%. All right? Do y'all see 40 to 85000 you're paying 22%. All right? What's happening to those percentages as you make more money? They go up. And so, like, I was, me and my husband are fighting jointly, and we actually just went over, like, by $1,000 into this tax bracket. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like, how did I miss that? Because I could have put more into our retirement, so the government's not taxing me on that, right? And I would have been on the lower bracket. And so eventually you'll be looking at these when you're older to try to figure out how do you put stuff in your retirement? How do you put stuff in your health insurance so that you're not paying the government, but, but you're paying yourself? Everybody used to pay the same flat tax rate. Do you think the poor like that? Looking at this, do you see a graduation, right? that they graduate as you're getting, like, let's say you're up here and you're going to be a big baller in your life, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, 58,000, 518,000, right? Well, 37% of your income. Mm -hmm. Let's just say you earn that one extra dollar, right, that puts you over here. Shouldn't you figure out what you need to do to get you into this lower tax bracket so that they're taxing you less? And so this is one of the things the populist wanted. Did they get it? at their time no but did they get it today this is the 16th amendment okay that's gonna have you ever seen your paycheck and what you thought you were gonna make a certain amount and you're like oh they took that much away and it's because of the populist party so you may hate them because of this but y'all understand graduated income tax so it taxes who more the rich and it taxes the poor less Last thing they wanted was government ownership of the railroad, the telegraph, and the telephone, hoping that they would regulate price. They wanted a secret ballot. From the images we've seen before, why would people want a secret ballot? Who, who do they want protection from? Their bosses, and then there was another group of people who were using the immigrants for their vote. 
the political machines. Boss Tweed, remember that? He was standing by the ballot box. They wanted a shorter day, eight hours. Oh, is that something we have today? Oh wait, let's look, secret ballot, is that something we have today? Eight hour workday, is that something we have today? I already did this, I don't know why it's on there twice. They wanted the direct election of senators. Senators used to be elected by the state legislators. Today, do we have the direct election of senators? So overall, the populace had all these ideas. Do you think they're gonna be effective in their time? No, but today, did we see their stuff become law? And it's because what party do you think is gonna adopt it, the Republicans or the Democrats? The Democrats are gonna adopt their ideas. So we're gonna see, they also want an initiative. We talked about these words last time, right? Initiative, I get to start a law. Referendum, this is what the school board did with the building of the school, remember that bond? What were some of those things in that referendum for the bond for this school that did not pass? The non-atorium and the ag barn but the people said yes to the school right and now they're doing a referendum about the rezoning what they're gonna do for a second high school um recall this is we talked about last time about the governor of California embezzling money and they removed him and they bring in who is the guy that they bring in Schwarzenegger so he becomes the governor right okay. so, <laughs> sorry amongst his terminator days okay so Ah, oh, y'all got my dry jokes. <laughs> okay, let's look at this. What do y'all see in this image? A hot air balloon. Okay, so what makes a hot air balloon go up? Hot air. So what do you think this, uh, is this a positive image or is this a negative image? It's a negative image, right? If someone calls you, you're full of hot air. That's not good. Okay, okay. Um, but do y'all see the things that's making up this hot air balloon? It says the People's Party. It is, has the Prohibition Party. So what does Prohibition mean? No alcohol. It has the Free Silver Party. So what do they want? Deflation or inflation? Inflation, it has the Socialists. Gosh, those Socialists. The Granger Party. Remember the farmers who wanted to get, go against the railroad? They have the Knights of Labor who wanted, who wanted um, greater pay for workers. The Greenback Labor Party that wanted inflation and to help labor. They have the Communists. They have the Farmers Alliance, okay? Um, and then they have the anarchists. Remember the Haymarket Square bombing? They were called anarchists. Okay, so, no, is this women's, women's, rights? Rights? Yeah. women's rights. How dare they want women's rights? It's right here, women's rights. Um, we're gonna see the Women's Christian Temperance Union come out in this area. We're gonna see Nassau come out of this area. Um, we're are advocating women's rights to be able to vote. So, okay. Is this a Democratic point of view or a Republican point of view? And they're saying they're full of what? Hot air, okay? And so it's the platform of lunacy. Um, and this is the populist, is the populist party is gonna bring in a lot of smaller parties together we've been talking about that all have been working against big business. They feel that the government is in the hands of business and they're gonna ask the government to do something for all of these groups. So this is where our notes start off. So do y'all see our notes, the, the revolt of the debtors? We're gonna start off with Harrison. What do we say Harrison had a lot of to spend? Money, and so he's gonna do the Sherman Silver Purchase. I'm gonna highlight what you need to write in your notes. So this should help you tonight on your homework or later today. Um, so he's gonna purchase silver. He increased the purchase of silver. So we're gonna write this. So what's gonna to happen to our money supply? Is it gonna increase or decrease? Increase, which now he's gonna equal one ounce of gold is gonna to equal to 16 ounces of silver. Okay? Which means it can produce more paper money. So we're gonna have inflation. But if you had your choice to have paper money, to have silver, to have gold, what would you rather have in your hand? And so this is what's gonna cause a drainage of gold in the money supply. And so the money that is out there, what's gonna to happen to its value? It's gonna decrease and we're gonna have a panic by 1893. So the next one we have on here is the Sherman Antitrust Act. We've seen this one before. It, the purpose was to stop monopolies from engaging in unfair practices. Y'all remember the pools, the rebates we've talked about? They were supposed to stop all of that stuff. We've seen this image before, right? Okay, where do y'all remember that they're at? 
The Senate and the people's interest is closed, and who are they lending into this area? The trust, right? So again, the government is in the hands of who? The business. The Sherman Antitrust Act is going to be used against business. Okay. Everybody got this one? The next one is, come on. And we saw that image, right? It was just blown up for us here. The Pension Act. We're going to talk about this image. Congress is going to pay pensions, which is just like retirement stuff, to Civil War veterans. Sorry, I do not highlight well. Just color this away. That's everything you need. Looking at this, what do y'all see in this image? He's eating, the, he's eating he what? So he has a lot of hands. Okay, he has a lot of hands because we're going to be paying a lot of pensions. Remember, there was a, a lot of people involved in the Union Army. We had a lot more men, right? We had the quantity versus the quality. But there was a lot of people who got out of the Civil War because they paid what? That $300 exemption. And so when the federal government is paying this stuff, are they going to be paying a lot more people that didn't deserve it? So if you look at the bull, what does the bull say? U.S. Treasury. US Treasury. And what's happening to all of that extra money? It's being depleted. So Harrison, with the Sherman Silver Purchase Act, is going to deplete that surplus. Along with this pension act, it is going to deplete that surplus we have because we are going to be paying a lot more people that were they actually in service. No. It, it's just a weird image, right? Okay. The next one on here, come on, is the McKinley tariff. It's going to raise the tariff to 48.5%. Oh, is that good? No. And who is going to get upset? What groups of people? Workers. Everybody got this one? We've seen this image too, right? Oh, where would I go? So Homestead, do y'all remember who owns Homestead? Oh wait, there was a couple of things on your notes that we're skipping over. Right? On your notes it said, had a major impact on Cuba, Hawaii, and why? Right? You don't have to write this down. We're going to cover this in imperialism. But the McKinley tariff now is going to say Cuba is a foreign nation, right? But there's Americans there who are making sugar. Are they going to have to pay this tariff? No. Yes. yes. Are they going to be happy? No. And this is going to lead to the Spanish-American War. Hawaii, is that even part of America at this time? Not yet. Not yet. But there's American planners out there, like a guy named Samuel Dole. Do you all know that name? The no. Dole. Like yeah. The football. the football Bulls, yes. And he's out there. Yes. I don't know. I you eat them frequently. Okay, uh, and so he's going to get upset that they have to pay this tariff 
He's going to lead a rebellion of American farmers out there to overthrow the queen, Queen Liliuokalani, and we're going to see that Cuba will become a protectorate and Hawaii will become a state because of this tariff. Don't write that down because we're going to cover it in when? In imperialism. So Homestead. In Homestead, we know workers are protesting. Car what in the world? I, I, don't even, I don't even know how to do that, and it did it. Um, I don't even know what I was doing. Um, workers protest Carnegie's wage cuts, but what doesn't he cut? Ah, prices that you have to pay for the house, right? Mm -hmm. Prices you have to pay for the food. And so we're going to see he's going to call in a private army to get away these strikers. And we're going to see the government is going to side with him. So again, who is the government siding with, labor or business? Business. Right. So we're going to get into this next election of 1892. Harrison is the Republican, so does he want the tariff or not want the tariff? Mm. Wants the tariff. Cleveland's back again, who lost before, because he doesn't want the what? Mm. Tariff. Weaver is the populist, and we know that the populist platform is really something that would reach to workers and farmers. But we're going to see workers, they voted for the Republican Harrison last time because they feared what they were going to lose. What were they going to lose? Yeah. Their jobs. But we're going to have a panic. This takes us to part B in our notes below. Y'all see that? They got out of order our notes. I have, or my slides got out of order. I don't know which one. But Cleveland is going to win. But now we're in a panic. And there's five reasons we're having a panic. The overbuilding of the railroad. We built too much railroads. Labor disorder, what do they keep on asking for? Labor. Mm -hmm. Higher wages. We have an agricultural depression, farmers' debts, and then drainage of gold. All of this stuff is what Cleveland's going to have to do. Everybody got this portion, and I think it's gonna go to uh, like a weird. Uh, it's gonna go to what was the government's role? Okay, right, do y'all see that? So, uh, do y'all see this bank right here? And it's closed, right? Over 500 banks are gonna close in this era. We're gonna see that over 15, 15,000 businesses are gonna go out. Three million people are gonna be unemployed. What do you think the government's policy is? Help people or not help people? What is that called when they don't help? So that's what, what was the government's role? Laissez-faire. And this is what's going to lead Coxie's army. Do you all see on C? Coxie's army. Under the Panic of 1893, what was the government's role? Laissez-faire. Okay. Okay. L-A-I-S-S-E-Z. L-A-I-S-S-E-Z. F-A-I-R-E. So Coxie's army of workers, they're going to want to march on Washington, D.C. And what they're demanding is government help. They want them to create jobs. Well, what happens to them? They get arrested for walking on the what? Grass. And we'll see this in the Great Depression, too. So farmers and workers are going to want demands. And what party are they going to go to? Are they going to go to the Republican? Are they going to go to the populist party? On part C, it says Coxie's army, they want government help. C, 
It says March on Washington, Coffee's Army. Okay. So Congress, now go back up to A. One of the things that they will do is they're going to repeal the Sherman Silver Purchase Act. They're going to stop the drainage of gold. That's what you need to write on A. So then this is going to take us to the back side now, but we're going to skip through D and we're going to look at E because my things got out of order. So Cleveland, tell me about his point of view on the tariff. Does he want the tariff or not want the tariff? But he's going to get the passage of the William Wilson Gorman tariff that increased the tariff rate. So now let's look at the question on E. Did it meet the goals of Cleveland in the 1892 election promise? Cleveland promised what with the tariff? No tariff or yes tariff? No tariff. What does this do? It increased the tariff rates. It does it hit his election promises? No. So put no on that first question. And then it asks for Cleveland's action. He's going to increase the tariff rates. Is the people of his party going to be happy? No. no. So now, um, do you think, how do you think the country is going to react with a higher tariff that they're in, they're in a panic? They're going to be upset, okay. <laughs> they're going to be upset. They're probably, yeah. that, that word over there, they're upset. So that's what you write for the next question. They're upset. And what did the Supreme Court decision make? They said this was perfectly fine. They upheld it. Right? Are we going to have issues between the rich going to one side and the poor going to another? It looks like a class warfare is going to break out. And it's further going to break out in Part D with the Pullman strike. In the Pullman strike, and it follows... Come on. I want us to look at this image right here. Okay, this is a worker. What's happening to his wages? They're getting lowered, but what's happening to the price of the living? So what's, what is the guy doing to him, the businessman? Crushing him. crushing him. He's getting crushed. He's getting squeezed all of his money out of him, right? Right? <laughs> I'm glad you'll have some empathy for this guy. Okay, so let's look at the fill in the blank. Haven't we seen this before with Carnegie? Okay, this is the same thing that is happening in a lot of these company towns because we're in a panic. We are having deflation. So the American Railroad Union went on strike because the Pullman company cut wages. That's your first blank. Strikers will stop the trains in Chicago causing, I had an issue here. Strikers stop the trains in Chicago which forced the U.S. Attorney General to call in. It should be federal, not troops. I highlighted the wrong thing. So you're putting federal troops. What law can they use to justify to bring in troops? There's a new law that's supposed to be used against monopoly. The Sherman Antitrust Act. They said that they're acting like a trust by taking over the railroads, taking over labor. So the government sides with business. And Eugene B. Dad's going to go crazy at this time. He's going to tie himself to the railroad and say, no, we need wages to increase. He is then put in jail. And while he's put in jail, he creates a new party called the Socialist Party. That is his legacy. What happened? All right. Now we're going to go to this election. Um, what two parties on part five do you think are going to unite together? The Democrat, the Republican, or the Populist?
do you think is going to unite together? Democrat with who? Populist. They will. So William McKinley, and you're going to write this on that little chart, the Republican candidate is William McKinley. His platform is that he's pro-business. So what area is he for? The North. He's pro-business, so he's for the North. He's pro-gold standard. So what type of money supply? Small or big? Small money supply or big money supply if it's gold? Small. And he wants a high tariff. Who does that benefit? <coughs> the rich. The, the business owners, right? So the, all you have is the candidate in the platform on part five. So on, on this part, we're going to write the Democrat and populist on one of the categories. They should have been together, but I guess when my person typed it up, they put them separate. He's going to be the same guy. His name is William Jennings Bryan. So under candidate, you don't have to write it twice, j twice, just write it once, William Jennings Bryan. He believes in bimetallism, gold and silver. So what would happen to our money supply? Okay. It would go up. Okay. We see that he believes in a low tariff. going to support William Jennings Bryan? Okay, what type of people would support the populist and Democratic Party? Farmers, who else? Common man, workers, right? And so who should win? Who should win this election? He should. He has a lot of people. But what do you think is going to happen? Same time. Who is going to bribe who? Or who's going to co-horse? Business owners are going to co-horse the workers. But William Jennings Bryan is going to take, and you're going to see this on the test, this, this quote. Um, it, it may not be the whole quote, but a good portion of it. All right? He's going to go around and he's going to give the cross of gold speech. All right? William McKinley will not even campaign. He's like, it's in the bag. I'm going to win. William Jennings Bryan is vying for the hearts of labor and of farmers, right? And the common man. He goes around. He says, if they dare come out into the open field and defend the gold standard. Who is he talking about? Who would defend the gold standard? The Republicans, right? As a good thing, we shall fight them to the uttermost, having behind us producing masses of the nation of the world, having behind us the commercial interests and the laboring interests of all the tolling masses, right? The workers, the farmers, everybody who's working. He says, we shall answer to the demands of the gold standard by saying to them, you shall not press down upon the brow of labor this crown of thorns. You shall not crucify mankind upon a cross of gold. Okay, there's an analogy. What is he, what is he referencing? Jesus. Jesus, okay, yes. He's referencing Jesus, right? Because y'all know Jesus was crucified on a cross, put a crown of thorns on. Why? Mock him. Mock him. Huh? Well, yes, yes. In the parable, they're, they're doing that. They're mocking him, right? But he openly accepts the crucifixion for why? For us. For our sins. Jesus did this for our sins so that we may be saved. So now William Jennings Bryan saying, who is being put on a cross of gold? Labor. Farmers. Workers. So they could save who? Businessmen. I'm sorry. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Um, in Jesus' name we pray. Um, uh, but do y'all get his analogy here? He's going to move the masses, right? This is a really good thing, and they're realizing their lot in life is really being hurt by gold, and he's endorsing silver that we should have inflation, and he's going out there, and he's touching the souls of people. Right? And you're like, wow, like you bring up Jesus. We're yeah. all for we're, Bible Belt, we're all you. Okay? So Jesus automatic ballot. Look where he gets, he does get the Bible Belt. He does get the Midwest. But where doesn't Brian win? 
in the north, the industrial centers. Because in the industrial centers, the businessmen tell their workers, if Brian wins, what are you gonna lose tomorrow? And so now, look at how close it was, 51% to 47%. But he wins that electoral college, and so should we have class warfare? Yes, that's what the next question is. Don't write anything down. It says, was the election of 1896 a class conflict? Yeah, William Jennings Bryan does show it as a class conflict, right? He says the workers, don't write it down. I promise you, you'll remember from the speech, okay? So should we have an all-out civil war between the rich and the poor? Yes, we should, right? McKinley wins. He's defending what standard? Gold. Right? And all the people want who are going that yellow brick road is want what? Silver. Okay? And so there's something that happens. McKinley wins, the populist party collapsed, but what kept the country from going into rebellion? We have the Klondike gold rush. Hey, okay? that's the last answer. You don't have to write it. When we find gold in Alaska, what happens to our money supply? It goes up so we could have more what? Paper money. So do we have a class conflict? Mm -hmm. No, and it's all because of the Klondike Gold Rush. Mm -hmm. Huh? It is an ice cream bar. <laughs>